Hey everybody, how we doing today? Another nice, calm, flat day out here in the Florida Keys. Unfortunately, it's already 2.30. I got jammed up with all about the bait stuff. 110 orders over the weekend, so that was awesome. Finally got them all packaged up overnighter last night and then uh, dropped off at the post office today. Uh, original plan was to try to find pilchards or live bait and run the edge of the reef, but it's just not gonna happen. Uh, so what I figured I would do is do a bait check at least I haven't done in a while see what baits around and then uh, just do some inshore style fishing I've got an hour and a half before the uh, tide swing so it's outgoing now which is perfect and then in about an hour and a half it's going to reverse which is not good but uh, what you're going to do at least we're fishing so that's the plan so do you think there's any pilchards around <laughs> kind of easy to spot today so I'm all set up here got my live bait well there i'm gonna be doing some uh chumming so i want to get a decent amount and start pitching them out at the outlet here someone's old fishing pole looks like it's been down here for a while Ugh, stuck in the water Yeah, with the reel. Ah, oh, broken tip. Old cheapy reel. Looks like someone got pissed off and threw the whole thing away. It's an old Shakespeare. Well, someone was probably bummed. There they go. Maybe they could come back for it there's some pilchards in here they're just not very many and they're not very big ones so I'm kind of glad I didn't spend a lot of time prepping to go offshore there's a few in there These are decent ones. All right, let's try to get a good throw here on these dudes that are trying to leave. Just a couple. A little bit deep. I need my seven foot net. Now, the issues I was having with the uh, pilchards is they were in smaller packs, very skittish, and I was in a bit of deeper water, foot and a half to two foot. So when I would throw that six foot, three sixteen inch mesh net over them, it sinks kind of slower and it's not as wide. So they were able, the big batch of them were able to kind of scoot under the net and get away. So the fix for that is I need to pull out my seven foot, which is a 14 foot diameter, three eighths inch mesh. So it's gonna be bigger diameter but it's also going to sink a lot faster that 3 16 inch, inch uh, glass minnow net is great for keeping those uh, small uh, minnows from getting stuck in the net but when I'm targeting the big ones and only throwing on the big ones it's really not an issue and this seven foot will take care of that problem and just basically catch everything around there so I need to go through patch this net up since there's like tons of holes from all the mullet and then give it a good uh, downy fabric softener soak to really soften it up. 
and uh, get ready for the bigger pilchards. Here's an example of the holes that I'm talking about. These aren't small ones. These are like big mullet kick their way through there. So I need to patch these up before I can really utilize this net, especially for the smaller pilchards. When I get a bunch of them, they'll all funnel through certain spots and then it'll just fall out of there. So I'll show you how to repair them. First thing I'm going to do is start clipping away all these little tag ends where it's broken off. Got my little snippers there and just cut it right up against the knot there. Because all they're going to do is cause it to catch just like a little snag. Next I'm just going to get a spool of mono, just regular fishing mono, uh, that matches basically the same diameter thickness of the existing cast net there. And then I'm going to cut a bunch of these, uh, I don't know, 5 inch pieces of uh, the mono there because I'm going to use those individually to tie this up. From here, you're just going to tie the net together. I mean with simple overhand knots. They'll go through one hole, out the whole other hole that you're going to want to group it with, and tie it together. Oops. That's why you don't want to make these uh, pieces too small because you still have to manage them and tie an over a knot. So just loop them together. That gets those two together. Now usually I would just tie another knot there and just cut it off, but I'm going to join this other section here, this other corner. Might as well get it at the same time. And that'll form a new three-way section. That. There. Cut this tag off. Right at the knot. Boom. And that section is done. And I'm just going to keep just doing that section by section until it all groups together. And that'll be patched. Okay, we're all patched up there. Just kind of closed up all the different holes and added some thread there but good to go another 10 to do all right change things up a bit i'm going to be using the water wolf underwater camera i haven't used this guy all year i was thought we would have cleaner water conditions but oh well we'll have to see what we can see it's a bit long of a leader but uh we'll try it out and i'll end up cutting this down anyways i'm going to run a uh Pilchard on here. That should get us some sort of action. Nice chunky pilchard. There are some nice ones there, just not a lot yet. Hopefully, more will be showing up. That's that. Camera on it. Ooh, spunky dude. me off I bet. I think we had a toothy critter. But should be some good footage I think. No I think I see the hook. Oh nope. All right gotta go to wire. All right let's try this again. The little 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 trace of wire. Uh, something swirled on it. There we go. There we go. Oh, and it came off.
Number two on our learning curve with the underwater camera was the visibility of my leader and uh, hook setup. Uh, I was kind of under the assumption because the water was kind of pea green dirty that uh, it wouldn't make a difference. Plus I was lazy and I didn't swap out the 30 pound mono that I was running for offshore and those black fin tuna out there. Uh, so that really became very apparent as soon as I saw the video how much this leader sticks out. I definitely should have scaled down. Um, I was also wasted a bunch of time because I was out of my wire leader and trying to knot up just a little piece is a big pain. I'm running a one-aught live bait hook. That was probably okay for the uh, larger pilchards, but uh, if I went down to the mediums, I could probably go to a number one and that would be fine. Uh, you don't want that big chunk of metal sticking out of their face. Those uh, mackerels and all of our fish are pretty smart, but uh, the mackerels and like barracuda, when they're picky, they'll go up to it and bump it with their nose and 360 it because they just know something's just not right the way that bait is that re uh, reacting. So they can be very suspicious. So I think uh, going down to using some of my yellowtail snapper, the 12 pound fluorocarbon will fix the leader issue. I also went down to West Marine, picked up some number two and number three wire leader. That's a 27 pound and 32 pound. I'll probably use the 27 pound uh, when I'm fishing the outlet there because it's not really big fish, like no big kings are going to be there. But I do catch a pretty good size. I think I caught that 24, 25 inch uh, zero out of there. So you got to be watch out for it. But no structure you're really dealing with. You just want that bite prevention. And that 27 is fine. Keep it down to maybe three inches, four inches uh, to just prevent the bite off, but not be still a big trace of wire there. But I think that will resolve our issues there. Sharky shark, but I got my camera back. That's the most important part. <laughs> Worried there, I had the drag on pretty tight. What did it take? And broke and cut me off. All right. All right. What do we get? That's gotta be something dinky. A uh, little mackerel. Is that a Spanish? Little Spanish. All right, so the current's slowing down, so I'm gonna head out to the outlet, right at the outlet, a little deeper water. Cause that camera is kind of just slowly sinking, so it's not staying up. Let's see if we can catch anything out here. Now the last piece of knowledge gleaned was something I kind of knew, but I didn't know how much it affected this mackerel bite. But uh, by the time I caught bait and everything, I was really, in the afternoon and it was basically I had about an hour hour and a half before low tide okay so this was an outgoing tide so it's going from the gulf of mexico to the atlantic on that downward spiral there and then from this point on it goes from the atlantic going towards the gulf of mexico 
and I always want the the uh, the water to be going from the flats out to the ocean, regardless if I'm on the Gulf side or the Atlantic side. I'm on the Atlantic side, so I want all that stuff flushing from the flats, getting pushed out of the outlet to the Atlantic where those fish are going to be coming, waiting for it to eat it. So I want that water flow to be going out and it's getting thinner and thinner. Then the water starts coming inward and then it starts getting higher, the water levels. But I got there just at the end of the uh, outgoing tide. Fish were there, they were feeding, everything was happy. I was getting a lot of follows and uh, all was good. But once that tide died, okay, you get a flat tide for about a half an hour or so, it goes flat, then it starts reversing. And then I stayed out till probably 5.30ish, about an hour or so after that flat tide for the incoming and absolutely nothing. I didn't catch anything, but also notice when I watched the uh, camera footage, there was nothing in that basin. I basically uh, trolled around different spots. I dropped that uh, camera down to the bottom and there just wasn't any fish there because they know that when the water is coming from the Atlantic and going into the inlet, there's no food that's gonna be coming in. So they disperse and go do something else. But it's definitely all about that outgoing tide, meaning food is getting pushed off the flats and the mangroves out into the open ocean. So all those fish come scattering. So that is just reinforcement for what I knew. I didn't even get this thing down to the bottom. I just put a bait over the side and a little jack came and got them. I think I saw a shark down there. Oh, maybe it was just the shadows. Always willing to fight. Well, I'm gonna call it. Tide is totally reversed, so there's no fish biting. Uh, hopefully I got some decent underwater footage. I mean, the winds were down, it was calm seas, but this water was really dirty, so I'm not sure how it affects the, what I'll be able to see, but I had quite a few bites and stuff down there, so I uh, should have something, so. We'll see. But anyways, I am wiped out from yesterday and today and my ouchie is still hurting and healing. So uh, I'm gonna call it early and head on in. So anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you next video. Bye.